Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, we're going to have a little bit of Mr. Bobby Brown in my background. And if he's in my background, he's in your background. So we're going to let him be Bobby Background Brown. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted to take the time, the last couple of videos and for the next, about the next seven videos, they will all be dedicated and associated to SATCOM. Now the ones that are done with the contribution to consultations in the description, those are the Eon channel. The ones that are SATCOM says a SATCOM production in a video title. So just thought we'd give you guys that information. Uh, sir, nobody else does things like that. That's right. Nobody else does things like that. So don't worry about the fact of what nobody else does. Okay. That's the problem with people always worrying about somebody else's business. Now, I know they're told to be mindful of the business of others. But it, it doesn't mean that when it says that. When it says don't be just concerned of your own business, be concerned with the business of others. It talks about that in assisting others and showing love. This is Bobby Brown, y'all. Now, I want to I want to tell you something. I was listening to this song, and I was thinking about the words. And hold on, Bob. Bobby says that he bought her diamond rings. Look, Bobby, if you got to buy a woman diamond rings just to show her you love her or just to get her to love you, you're supporting hosiery, and you need to go work in the lingerie department. Okay, if you if your woman's girlfriend or wife really loves you, then all she's expecting of you is for you to give her you. And many of you are incapable of giving your women you. No, 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 no. You make a mistake, what do you do? You buy her a gift. What the? That, that's what you do to a child. Here, here's some candy. Did you hurt? Did you? Oh, that's a boo-boo. Here's some candy. Here's some ice cream. That type of conduct is, is stupidity. You guys are going to have to figure out how to get around that stuff because I, I've never understood that. I've never understood giving somebody a gift to say you're sorry. But isn't that what the Christmas season is all about? Hey, a diamond ring is the best way to tell her. I love you. Isn't that what the stupid jewelers commercial says? And you guys fall for that. Okay? You don't give somebody a gift to show them you love them. You give them of your time. Don't you don't believe me? Those of you who believe in a God. Doesn't your God require of you? that you make a sacrifice of your time and devotion? Interesting, ain't it? As a matter of fact, the God I serve, he kind of asked, <laughs> what can we give him that he didn't already make? So, ladies and gentlemen, stop thinking that you can show somebody you care by giving them a stupid gift. That's not how you show people you care. It never was. That's that commercialism junk. All right, Bobby, I knew you were loud before, so we're going to put you in the back background. So he's going to be in the back background, so he's not louder than me. Because I'm not using any assistance from um, any Bluetooth or anything like that. I'm, I'm actually just talking into the speaker of this device. And I've already listened to the test video, and it turned out okay. So I'm going to keep it with me just being free. Us free, Ma. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've done a couple of videos lately talking to people about their properties. Again, a lot of people are about to be foreclosed on, and we've been noticing that judges, they're just not listening anymore. You can bring whatever quote-unquote argument you want, and they're just not listening. Oh, Lord, how do you get a judge to listen to you? 
How do you get him to take what you're writing seriously? I mean, you can add a ton of case law saying, wait a minute, you guys have already decided this and you're ignoring your own case law. What is wrong with you people? Are you um, missing some cogs? Ladies and gentlemen, if you've explained something to a judge and that judge refuses to listen to you, there is a process that you can follow. You are permitted to do this. The first thing you do is you write a letter to the presiding judge and you bring the judge's conduct to the attention of the presiding judge. Now, you cannot be upset about a judge's decision. It has to be his conduct. And you have to identify a conduct that is unbecoming. You have to identify a conduct that violates due process. You have to identify a conduct that denies you due process and violates your common law rights as spelled out in the Bill of Rights. Once you do that, you need to understand you also put in the Civil Rights Act of the 1800s, which is codified at 18 U.S.C. 241-242-247. Why do you put in Title 18, Criminal Code, which is a quote-unquote positive title, and then you put supported by Prima Facie Section 242-241 and 247. Why do you do that? Because you have to show that the judge, his misconduct or her misconduct, is in violation of the law. If they violate the law, they are acting in bad behavior. All judges sit in office while in good behavior. What constitutes bad behavior? Well, they've never actually defined what constitutes bad behavior. But one thing we do know is that judges are always telling defendants that their behavior was bad. And society won't tolerate it when they commit crimes. So if they commit a crime, then you can report that to the presiding judge. Now, here is the thing. Let's, let's see if we can do that for a second. We can go online. We ain't been online in a long time. And I do mean a long time. What was I doing? These are doc, uh, things that I've downloaded. So we don't want that stuff. Y'all don't need to see none of that. We're going to do... I don't know what it do right here. Let's see. We go. All right, it, it'll correct the, the I and make it a Y in a second. See, there it is right there. Letter of regulatory. Then we're gonna go here. Now I'm only bringing this to your attention because there was a young man, we're gonna give him a little bit of credit. His name is Gonzo. Some of y'all know who Gonzo is. Well, he first brought the letter of regulatory to my attention in 2012. No, was it 2012? No, Gonzo brought it to my attention in 2018, 2019. Sorry, when he was um, part of one of our organizations. And when he did the letter of regulatory, it was based on this information right here. So let me show it to you. Let me show you something. Letters of regulatory are a customary method in obtaining assistance from abroad in the absence of a treaty or executive agreement. A letter of regulatory is a request from a judge in the United States to the judiciary of a foreign country requesting the performance of an act which, if done without sanctions in the foreign country, would constitute a violation of that country's sovereignty. So they say it's a letter from a judge of the United States. 
to the judiciary of a foreign country. So you're going to send this to the presiding judge of the court. Why? Well, technically, the judges, they take an oath of office. Their oath is to uphold the Bill of Rights, not the Constitution. You guys really must understand the difference. Their oath is to uphold the Bill of Rights, your common law rights. That's their oath. Now, many people, I want to... Um, Go back and let's let's look at something else because I haven't done this yet. Uh, let's see. You know what? I I hadn't even thought about this until now. I really haven't thought about this until now, and y'all needs to understand that yes, I am a genius. And I want you guys to understand when I say that I hate this app because it, it wants to sit up there and do ads. I didn't ask for it to do no ads. Well, that's because I'm not using the, uh, the app that way anymore. So I didn't ask for it to do ads and it's getting on my nerves. So I'm going to minus it right now. Not add it. I'm going to minus it so I can get to what I want to play. See, that, that's how we do things around here. We don't do the ad thing. And I'm going to stop using it. Oh, this is iHeartRadio that's playing in my background. And because iHeartRadio is playing in my background, it wants to do ads. So we're going to subtract it. That's what we're going to do. We're going to subtract. So. All right. Like I said, I will give myself credit for being a genius. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to, that's what this video started out with. And I wasn't planning on talking about this because I didn't come up with it until just now. As I was scrolling down this page, the thought came to my mind. You had a thought come to your mind? Do we need to write this down? Uh, this sounds like the first time in history. So this looks like one of those monumental moments. Had <laughs> This never happened before. So we, we, oh. Okay, too much? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, can I help you out? Arbitrators are judges. They are United States judges. They perform judicial acts. What I am going to do for the aid of sitcom and all the other arbitration associations out there is I'm going to suggest that if you have a judge that has acted without the law, has violated the law, has attempted to invalidate arbitration awards without stating any law, without stating any facts, without stating any conclusions of law, then that's what you do. You do a letter of rogatory. Now, how do you write a letter of rogatory if you're not a judge? Ah, let's watch this. We are going to get rid of the Department of Justice. I want the Hague Convention. I don't want the Department of Justice because the Department of Justice, let's get the right rogatory. The Department of Justice is the, is the entity that is for the United States. But we are dealing with the Hague Convention. That's the United Nations. It's called the Convention at the Hague. There was a lot more going on at the Convention of the Hague we get it done <laughs> i'm sorry their motto head convention services we get it done okay that's a company that's not the hag okay again like i said i don't go to regular person's websites because that's not what i'm looking for nor am i looking for stuff from the department of justice to explain to me what international law is 
okay what i will do is i will go to this justice website ladies and gentlemen because i think that i am interested and we'll explain why this letter works for you some of you have already somewhat figured it out the office of international justice As judicial assistance serves as a central authority for the United States pursuant to the convention of 18th March 1970 on taking of evidence from abroad in civil and commercial matters. Ladies and gentlemen, let's show you how this works in your behalf. Some of you will get this, some of you will not. You will have to explain this, so pay attention. Hey, uh, Mr. Hootie, Hootie, hold on now. Y'all know Mr. Hootie, don't y'all? Well, he, he does country now. And so, Mr. Hootie. There's quite a few songs on there by him. When I heard he was going country, I wasn't too keen on that. But his voice is all right. You know what? So it doesn't sound too different from what he was doing before. So who knew the Blowfish were singing country music the whole time? All right, ladies and gentlemen. As I was mentioning, judges take an oath of office. They take an oath of office to adhere to the Bill of Rights. Now they say Constitution, you say Constitution, then you say they have several constitutions. No, because the office that they take is not an office for those other constitutions. They are appointed under the one Constitution that you and I know about. So since they are appointed under that Constitution, <clears throat> since they are appointed to that constitution I want y'all to pay attention and they act in opposition to that constitution or contrary to that constitution that makes them foreign agents if they take another constitution if they take another oath to a different constitution that makes them foreign agents and as foreign agents, need y'all to hold on now because some of y'all not going to get it at first. As foreign agents, they operate without the United States and not within. Which means a letter of rogatory documenting that these individuals are not United States judges, but rogue agents documenting that these individuals are not United States judges, but administrative, which means not part of the judicial branch, which makes them foreign to the United States. Go back and look at the Constitution. There is no such thing as a judge for the executive branch, an administrative judge. There is no such thing as a judge for the congressional branch, a legislative judge. There are no such things. These are things they created. And so long as one of these agencies, entities, organizations violates your due process rights they are operating outside the constitution where congress were said to have no authority to make any law or any judge appointment that violated your rights that abridged your rights go back and look at the first amendment i would add that to my letter these are the prohibitions this judge is operating outside the prohibitions which means this judge is acting as a rogue agent, and I would use the word rogue agent. They understand it. They are an agent. I would bring forth and put forth your evidence. Now, some people will disagree with me on this. Now, pay attention. In addition, the OIJA, the International Judicial Assistance, handles evidence requests received from non-convention states through diplomatic channels. Please note that the United States is not a party to the Inter-America Convention on Letters of Rogatory for purposes of obtaining evidence. Wait, wait, hold on. Hold on, what you mean? You, you're not a, a, a party. You telling me you ain't a party to this convention, but you're part of the convention concerning other things, but not Letters of Rogatory uh, and obtaining evidence? You see, what the United States says is we, we're going to agree to this, but we're not going to agree to that. Why? Because the United States wants to control 
pay attention. The United States wants to control how they are persecuted, how they are brought before other courts and other venues. Have you seen the United States being brought before any other jurisdiction like it brings other jurisdictions before it? Go ahead. The United States has tried individuals in Iraq. They have tried individuals in Afghanistan. But let Afghanistan and Iraq try the United States military for the acts of atrocities that they have committed. Now, are these the regular soldiers? No, because not all military personnel are bad. Not all military personnel are evil. But sorry, some of them have done some really atrocious things. Not all police officers are bad. Not all police officers are evil. But many of them have done some really atrocious things. And the majority of them have sat back, watched, and because they have not said anything, are complacent in the wrongdoing. They are accomplices. Sorry, that's what the law says. If I go and I'm in a car and my homie decide he's going to rob a bank and I'm sitting up there waiting outside while, while he in there robbing the bank and he come on out and he says, all right, man, let's go. Hurry up. I go, man, what the, is going on? He said, man, if you don't hurry up, you're going to find out real soon. And I hit that pedal and the tires start to spin and the smoke starts to come up and it blocks the camera from seeing my license plate. That still doesn't stop me from being an accomplice. Even if I stayed there and waited for the popos to get there, they still going to say that I had every intent, that I was an accomplice. So look here, Mr. Offama, sir. Many of you are fortunate that people are not calling you accomplices. Many of you, are, many of you are fortunate that you have the district attorney's office in your states. Gaston! I have a lot of respect for Mr. Gaston because he came into office keeping a promise saying that, no, uh-uh, we ain't having that. And they went after him immediately. I give Mr. Gaston, I have not heard anything about Gaston since probably February of this year. But what I will tell you is that he shook things up enough. The so-called attorney's office here in California, the county of Los Angeles, was sitting up there really causing a lot of problems. And so what happened is Mr. Gaston said, uh-uh, y'all, we about to take and shake some things up. That's what he said. And they said, no, you ain't shaking nothing up. He said, watch me. And next thing you know, like Elvis Presley, <laughs> it was all shook up. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, they actually tried to sue Gaston for his executive orders. Mr. Gaston had every right, every right, to sit up there and make the choices and decisions that he made and his subordinates as long as he did not violate the law had to obey his commands so he told them i don't want you guys going after the death penalty anymore he said no and they said mother you don't get to tell us what to do we've been here longer than you i've been here 20 years as a matter of fact we're going to do a recall on you excuse me ladies and gentlemen they have every right to seek a recall against him. However, if they're doing it because he made a decision that they don't like, they don't get to do that. They don't they don't get to do that. They don't they don't even have that right. Just like you can't complain about a judge's decision. You cannot complain cuz the judge didn't agree with you. They can't complain against him because he didn't agree with them. You follow me? So, as mentioned, and I'm, I'm not bringing this against police officers, I could care less how they feel. This ain't about how they feel. This is about right and wrong. Love Keith Sweat when he said there's a right and a wrong way. Okay? This is about right and wrong. That's the only issue. Now, what's wrong? What's wrong is that many people have no 
idea as to how to get redressed anymore. They complain to their government officials and nothing gets done. Nothing gets corrected. They ignore them. They write something to one of the agencies, such as the Internal Revenue Service, and the Internal Revenue Service ignores them. Then they want them to go to court, where the courts have a policy where they ignore the person. Ladies and gentlemen, I just received an email this morning from the company who does our service for our company, and they were letting us know that starting in 2022, that for those of you who live in a particular city within the United States, and you just dial the number in your city on your landline or on your cell phone, well, from now on, you're going to have to dial all 10 digits. This, this, the FCC has decided. Now, do you know why the FCC decided this? Well, because the suicide prevention hotline, they're going to have a 988 number. You know, like you dial 911 to get to the emergency services. Well, they're going to have a 988 number. And because they're now doing the 988 number, well, that means that everybody else has got to dial all 10 digits, no matter what city they're in. What the, what type of an excuse is that? Well, because the, the, the suicide rate is up. The suicide rate ain't up just this year. The suicide rate's been going up every year. And because of that, we created a new number. Yes, but when you created the 911 number, you didn't make people dial 10 digits. When you created the 844s and the 833s and the 877s and the 888 numbers, you didn't make people dial no stupid 10 digits. So why are you giving that as an excuse now? Ladies, gentlemen, that's the problem. And that's what you need to know. That's the problem. Um, technically, ladies and gentlemen, I, the way that I see the way the law is in the United States, the people, the people, not, not the person. See, everybody wants to be a sovereign. Stop wanting to be a sovereign. You're not a sovereign in the United States. Yes, yes, yes. You have a right to rule your own home. You have a right to self-determination. Knock yourselves out. But you do not have the right to sit up there and impose your rights upon another. So no, you cannot insist on being somebody's stupid sovereign citizen. In the United States, the sovereignty of the people resides in the people. It has always meant the people are sovereign, not the person. The people is a group. The person is singular. Go back and look at all the case law you've seen on where the sovereignty is in the United States. It says it's in the people. Go back and take a look. And for those of you who've been going over the information about the Bill of Rights at archive.org, for those of you who've been looking at how that convention was put together and how they proposed the original Bill of Rights in 1787 and quote-unquote apparently finally decided upon it in 1791 where they added we the people of the United States in order to form a perfect union to establish justice and ensure domestic tranquility provide for the common defense both the general welfare and secure the blessings of liberty for ourselves and our prosperity to ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America those of you who see that you must understand when you hear me say that the original Bill of Rights was the original Bill of Rights. I could care less about what was decided in 1791 because that wasn't the original. Okay, but it was decided upon. The people did agree. And so I give the people that credit for having that agreement. Yay! However, it was the people, not the person. All right, let's get back to our letters of rogatory, okay? Letter of rogatory, California. Letter of rogatory, federal court. You know what? I want to do federal court because you notice they, see, letters of rogatory, this is in its broader sense, an international practice 
letters of rogatory denotes a formal request from a court in which an action is pending. Ladies and gentlemen, as one of the people, you are a court. Now, I, we can't go into all the details of explaining to you how you become a court. Because you get to make decisions. You get to determine things. You get to make judgments on things in your own life. The United States actually permits that, allows that, agrees with that. If you don't believe me, what I want you to do is I want you to go and prove me wrong. I, I just want you to prove me wrong. That a judge is not a judge that's appointed. That's why these judges can sit up here and act the fool. A judge is not a judge who sits in a position as a United States judge. No, that's not just a judge. Because remember, you have legislative judges, you, which are the bankruptcy judge. If you want to know what a legislative judge is, a magistrate is a legislative judge. You can't prove, of course I can prove that a magistrate is a legislative judge. Go ahead and see that the magistrate is not an Article Three judge. Go ahead and see that the Judiciary Act does not permit for any Article One, Article Two, Article Three, or Article Four judge. Sorry, that's somebody emailing me. I apologize. So go, go ahead and see that that's not the case. Okay, the Constitution does not permit for a judge to be Article 2, Article 3, or Article 4. It only permits the so-called Article 3. That's called the Judiciary Act. There is no Article 1 Act permitting for judges to operate under the judicial power of the United States. That's what Article 3 was purported to be. Do you understand? In my background, that's Anthony Hamilton, y'all. So I'm going to click here, and then we're going to move on because we got to get back to talking about them houses, y'all. Now, in a broader sense, in international practice, the term letters of rogatory denotes a formal request from a court to in one court to another court from a foreign court blah, 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 to perform some judicial act. I want you to pay attention because y'all not paying attention. You see that judicial act word right there? That's what arbitrators do. They perform judicial acts. So that means that they are a <clears throat> foreign jurisdiction to the court system. Examples are requests for the taking of evidence, the serving of summons, subpoenas, and other legal notices, or the execution of civil judgments in the United States. Uses letters of regulatory have been commonly utilized only for the purposes of obtaining evidence. See, commonly we don't care about commonly. We care about what it's for. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, again, it has to be a foreign jurisdiction. Well, arbitration is a foreign jurisdiction to the court. So if somebody has ruled against you, and when I say ruled against you, in your arbitration, and they violated the Federal Arbitration Act, they violated your due process rights, they violated the terms. Now, when I say the Federal Arbitration Act, I'm talking about the United States Arbitration Act. That's the official title, the legal title, the what's known as the positive law title. It's the United States Arbitration Act. Okay, now, we got the letter of rogatory. We're going to get that out of the way because we don't need that no more. If they have ruled... In violation of the law that makes it a void judgment you are permitted to bring that to the court's attention but it has to be the presiding judge of the court now the presiding judge of the court is usually said to have the authority to act under the authority of the Constitution so that's what you're gonna have to high mama light okay you're gonna have to high mama light that so that oh, I'm sorry highlight you're gonna have to high mama light that so that that person will know that you're coming to them under their judicial capacity and not under their administrative capacity. Following me? All right. So let's get to the next point. Ladies and gentlemen, I just did a video yesterday. That video is about an hour long, but it has taken about three hours for it to upload. 
Google has an algorithm where while I'm doing videos and I'm connected to the internet, it actually is listening. Not not the per a person, no, the algorithm is listening to the video, listening to what I'm saying, the information that I'm disseminating. And it's trying to determine whether or not I'm telling y'all something that's going to hurt the system. Whether or not I'm revealing some information that you should know. So that's why the other day a 30 minute video took over two and a half hours to upload. When the 45 minute video only took 35 minutes. You follow me? Okay. Just thought I'd explain that. And done the same day on the same system with the same so-called internet speed. Amazing. But that's what's been happening as of late. So that's just me letting you guys know. Uh, I also have to, like I did today, I have to make sure that the system is recording because what we've been finding, you remember that tax document I put up for you guys? Well, and I, if you've been watching the videos, you saw that I was pointing out the tax document, showing it to you. It was even in my um, PDF filler. Okay, well, PDF exchange, not PDF filler. Sorry, what's happening in the background, if you're hearing the music cut off, is the... Google's hi Google that just that's coming on on the other system and even though I'm not saying that it's still popping up so it's kind of irritating um, and I don't even use the service don't care about them taking my voice and all that I could care less let's get back to you guys ladies and gentlemen when it comes to giving you guys information the system doesn't want certain information out there and so they're going out of their way for instance see I can't come into court with you and tell the court wait a minute hold on what are you guys doing I, I've challenged your jurisdiction you must prove your jurisdiction just saying something that you have jurisdiction that's not enough and just putting a piece of paper on the record is not enough you can't certify your own jurisdiction look a court cannot sit up there and determine its own jurisdiction. Its, its jurisdiction must be established by record by law. So what they've been doing is they've been establishing their jurisdiction only by the so-called record because they say that they have jurisdiction. Well, the law says that they can't do that. Do, do you hear me? The law says they cannot do that. That they don't have the authority to do that. They don't get to just sit up there and say oh we got jurisdiction that's not how it works it has never worked that way but this is what they do and this is what they do all the time so you all it's your responsibility to bring to their attention hey you can't do that that's your responsibility but you have to know how to bring that to their attention hey Y'all remember this? Got to get you into my life. Got to get you, got to get you, got to get you into my life. Okay, Earth, Wind, and Fire in my background. Ladies and gentlemen, like I said, I can't go into court for you, and I can't speak for you in court. No, it's not that I can't. I actually can. There is no law preventing me from speaking for someone in court. You don't need a lawyer to speak on someone else's behalf in court. What's happening is you're in these foreign jurisdiction courts and they created rules to prevent you from speaking up from your, for your neighbor as the next friend, okay? But everybody's a minor, so anybody should come in, should be able to come in as a next friend. Now, let me see if somebody can argue that point because you can't. This thing about lawyers having the only rights to speak on someone else's behalf in court, that is a lie. Go and look at the Constitution and see if it says anything about some stupid lawyer. Look and see if it even uses the name lawyer anywhere in the Constitution. The Sixth Amendment never intended the word lawyer, and there were lawyers around in that day. Lawyers existed in that day. The bar existed in that day, but you do not see the Sixth Amendment saying that you need a licensed attorney. 
The reason why there is a maxim of law that no state may license the practice of law because the practice of law is universal. What are you talking about universal? Well, there is a rule. It's a massive principle that has been in existence since common law was invented. Common law? Yes, it's called the Torah. The law of Moses is what it's commonly referred to of. But that was the common law. Those first ten commandments, that was the common law. Go ahead. That's why no one in the United States can infringe upon a person's right to practice religion. First three commandments. Freedom of speech. But let's get back to the point, ladies and gentlemen. When we're dealing with your right to know the law, according to the Jewish law, we'll refer to it as the Jewish law, and even, even though they didn't write the law. According to that, ignorance of the law, because the law applied to foreigners and it applied to proselytes and everyone else who came into the territory of Israel, they were required to know the law. So what happens is just like in the United States, the priest would have to tell the law to the people. And so they daily, on the Sabbath, they read the law aloud in the synagogues. That was a tradition that carried out throughout Jesus' time. Uh, year round, there were no synagogues in, in, in the Jewish times. Synagogues didn't happen until right about the Roman time. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's not true. Because they just weren't called synagogues. It was called the assembly. It said things like the scribes and the priests spoke to the entire assembly that Moses spoke to the entire assembly. All the synagogue was was an assembly place, a place where the Jews assembled to learn and study and go over the law. Remember when he was 12 years old, the scriptures say Jesus sat up there and he was questioning the leaders and the leaders in Jesus had conversations. Okay, I'm gonna, uh, I've been using, I'll be right back, y'all. I have to uh, take care of this, uh, this stupid, um, what's the name of this program? This stupid uh, <laughs> iHeartRadio. I have to delete the one that I have now because what happens when it updates yeah, when it updates, it, it creates a problem. And the problem it creates, I can't have. So I'm about to get rid of that junk while I'm talking to y'all because I'm going to download it again. I mean, upload it to my phone again. Because when it updates, it goes past my modification. And I need my modification. So I'm about to take care of that later. And I think I might have Spotify, but if I don't have Spotify, we're going to play my music my way because that's what I do every day. And I have no idea how that system works, but it works. So give me one second and we will get back into talking because I got to have some music in my background like the young men were saying a mo long ago, a minute ago, about got to get somebody into their life. Woo-wee. That's what I got to do. I got to get some music into mine. So we're going to do some Aloe Black. You know, Aloe, I ain't played you in a minute. Got a lot of respect for Mr. Aloe. Okay. We're going to end this with Aloe in my background. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what's been going on, and you all need to be aware of this. So... All the information given to you a moment ago may have been beneficial, but for those of you who have mortgages and whom the system is coming after, my suggestion is that you pay attention. I've repeated this. I've been talking about this since 2009 to people. When you go and you purchase a home, they tell you, hey, I'm here to find out what do I need to do to purchase a home. Well, first, we have to get you pre-approved. 
Pay attention to the word pre-approved. Many of you who've purchased a home have heard that word before. We have to get you pre-approved for a loan. Then a couple of days later, oh yeah, we pre-approved you for a hundred thousand dollars. Only a hundred thousand. Yeah, based on your credit score, and you know, it's it's only a hundred thousand dollars. Ladies and gentlemen, I gotta pause y'all for a second. Gotta find out who's called. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry I had to put y'all on pause. I had to take that call. That is from someone who is incarcerated, and they had a question, and I do that. Now, I have a couple people who are incarcerated who call me. There is one young person who calls me, and he calls me from um, a unique perspective and a unique, uh, let's just say a unique perspective. I have a lot of respect for that person. Uh and he and I are supposed to be talking about his friend, and we haven't talked about his friend. And say hello to my little friend. We haven't talked about his friend, and we have to talk about his friend because his friend is involved in a situation where they're trying to double jeopardy him. And I am trying to assist them not to double jeopardy him. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get back to the understanding of what's going on. So they have approved the person for $100,000. They tell the person they have to pay for all the inspections and all of that permit junk, and they do. They actually say, we're going to split the cost between you and the seller. Okay, that's not a problem. You agree to that. Then about three weeks later, they say, hey, as I said in the video yesterday, hey, we're about to close. So because we're about to close and you're just now getting here, um, we're gonna have to go ahead and rush this because you know we got to get we got to get about our business We have other things we need to take care of so because we're about to close We need you to sign this paper this paper this paper this paper. Oh, don't worry about that and sign this paper, too Okay, right there on that line. Okay, we got a notary right here, and they're gonna take your signature and everything Who thank you very much for now. We're gonna just kick you on out the door. Okay here, here are the keys. Bye. Bye what, what you mean you signed over the property to us? Yeah, you signed over the property to us Oh, that's a done deal. You signed it in front of a notary. We got witnesses. That's why we have the notary here, and we're here because we're witnesses to what you just did. Woo! So go ahead and try in court uh, to argue with us. Okay, it don't work that way, son. You don't get to argue with us. Ladies and gentlemen, when you get approved for the loan, go back and listen to the conversation. You remember the conversation. You've been approved for blah, 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 blah. You don't need to put down any collateral at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't need to put down any collateral at this time. Amazing, ain't it? If you didn't need to put down any collateral, why are they having you put your house up as collateral at the end of the loan? Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make sense to me. Something is wrong. Well, it's the words. They say this. It doesn't matter. It's the words. They say this. They say that. It's the implied consent and intent. That's what matters. It is your intent that matters. You really do need to understand that. And many of you are not understanding intent. Intent is a very powerful word because we're in the land of contracts and contracts is always implied consent, implied content, excuse me, implied consent, implied intent. I said consent and then I put a C in intent. So implied intent, implied consent. That is what their laws rest on. So, how do you correct that? Well, first you write a letter to the bank saying, I do need to get a better understanding of this, so I need you to provide me proof that you made me aware that I would put the home up as collateral at the beginning of this loan. I do believe that there has been an issue of fraud committed. Well, the deed of trust, well, uh-uh, the deed of trust, my intent was not to place my home up as collateral because that would means I didn't have to. And that means also I didn't receive consideration for placing my home up as collateral. 
the law says that there must be consideration for such a gesture on my part and that I would have to have the intent of doing that, but you made a promise to me that I would not need to place anything as collateral. Then what I'll do is I'll go before the court and I'll let the court know that these documents were pre-typed and in front of me and that you were holding my keys saying that you weren't going to give me my property unless I signed those papers, which means that that is coercion. And because it's coercion, um, technically, deed of trust is void. Now, if the deed of trust is void, that doesn't mean I lose the house. No, 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 because there's a note. See, there's a note and the deed of trust. So with the note and the deed of trust, the note shows that I am the owner. So I don't lose the house. Deed of trust just gets to be kicked out of the dough. I'm going for fraud. Now, the law says I have to prove fraud. So I have to prove that you misled me. Well, you told me that I did not need to put down any collateral. And so I did not have the intent of putting down collateral. Then you told me that all I had to do was go and find a property, and I did. Then you told me, oh, look, we got funding, the house funded. And all of this happened without any collateral. Then you told me I needed to come and sign some papers in addition to what I had already signed, and I did sign those papers. But then you told me that, hey, we've already paid the seller. The only thing you need to do is sign these papers and we'll give you the keys and the house is yours. Well, you misled me because the house was already mine. The deal was already complete when you paid the seller because I had already signed the papers for the loan. I had already done a promise to pay, but you added all of this other stuff at the end. You switched things on me without notifying me that this was going to incur damage. So now I, I think I have a good case for fraud. Then I relied on that information and I relied on that frost information to my own injury and the injury of my property and the injury of my credit profile, my credit worthiness. See, now I've just proved damage to my person and damage to my property, which the law requires. But you also did this in conjunction with others to defraud me, which means now there is the issue of conspiracy and that you all were trying to get some unjust enrichment. You were trying to enrich yourselves at my expense. When you did that, you violated my rights. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the basis for your bringing forth a fraud complaint, is you must prove that they misrepresented information and that you relied on that misrepresented information to your injury or to the injury of your property. You must prove that their intent was to unjustly enrich themselves and to defraud you or to deprive you of life, liberty, or property. Okay, and if they commit a conspiracy, you just have to show that they, each of the parties who were involved in the conspiracy had knowledge of the conspiracy, knowledge of the falsities, knowledge of the intent to cause you harm, and knowledge of your reliance on such falsities to your injury and or harm. That's why you send out notices of this. So when you go into court and it's foreclosure, then you bring up the fact that they attempted to defraud you and that they are trying to commit fraud upon the court which requires an evidentiary hearing. They'll say, well, did you sign this mortgage? Oh, no, it has nothing to do with did I sign. It has everything to do with whether or not I was placed under duress to sign that. What do you mean you were placed under duress? I don't see it. Excuse me. If you're going to ask a question, ask one at a time, and I will answer your questions one at a time, but do not sit up here and ask a question and then keep speaking. Give me an opportunity to respond to you. I know you have a way that you normally do things, but we're not in normal circumstances. So please don't do that. I'm asking this officer of the court to respect my equal rights to equal time. So if you ask me a question, 
Give me the opportunity of responding to your question. Don't sit up here and ask a question and come to your own conclusions without giving me an opportunity to respond because that's not due process. If you're gonna ask a question, then allow me the opportunity to respond. Whether or not you like my answer, I have a right to place my answer on the record. So I'm bringing forth a fraud claim. I have the right to an evidentiary hearing to prove my claim. I also have a right to subpoenas and witnesses to prove my claim of fraud. The burden is up on me to prove fraud and you don't do that in five seconds. You don't do that by not allowing me the opportunity to prove my claim. If I bring up a claim of fraud, I have the right to prove my claim. Now tell me please, if I said anything that the law does not afford me. Do you understand? I hope you do. Many of you are about to go to court. Many of you want me to help. I can't help but give you guys information all at the same time. Now look, no one has brought forth this information in court, especially in bond. You guys are gonna have to pay attention. You're gonna have to file complaints against the bank with the FCPB, the Consumer Fraud, uh, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. So F, <laughs> CFPB, excuse me. Okay, you're gonna have to file a complaint with them, cfpb.gov, or is it .org? Just type in CFPB and you'll pull up the, uh, hold on. We're looking at this, as, you don't need to know anything about the 88 form, it doesn't, that, that form is nothing. Somebody told it to me, so I put it in. C, F, P, B. See, complaint. There it is right there. C, F, P, B. Okay, and it's not gov. Consumerfinance.gov. Okay, file your complaint there. Then you're going to go with, hold on. I didn't want that. I want that. Come on, one more. Okay, then we're going to go F-T-C. Complaint. Look at that. Then you're going to file a complaint with the F-T-C. Then watch this. Want y'all, those of y'all who paying attention? No, 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 no. I don't want Federal Trade Commission. Get out of here. Didn't ask for all that. Come on now. All right. Then we're going to do this one. F E D. R E S Then we're going to do the Federal Reserve complaint form. You are going through foreclosure. These are the issues you're going to bring up that we just talked about. These are the agencies you're going to file your complaint with. If they deny your complaint, then you're going to do yourselves a favor, appeal the denial. Okay, now, here's the other thing, ladies and gentlemen. It is... See, filing a complaint against a credit reporting agency, now you get to do that too. If they don't go ahead and remove this from your credit report based upon your claim of fraud, you do get to file a claim of fraud with them. We don't want, uh, we want the federal reporting agency complaint form for right now. Okay, did I mess up a word? Oh, reporting, reporting agency. <laughs> anyway. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we don't want credit.com. Those are ads. That's why Google is required to put that they're ads. I don't want that. Stop that. So let's go back to this one. Now, see, this one says CFPB. We don't want Consumer Finance Protection Bureau. We're filing a complaint with the reporting bureaus. Okay, so 
it gives me everything but the reporting bureaus. So, ladies and gentlemen, I just need you to know that each of the reporting bureaus, all four of them, you are allowed to file a complaint against them. And then that's the final one, ladies and gentlemen. You're allowed to file your complaint with the, pay attention, you're allowed to file a complaint with the Attorney General's Office for your state and the Attorney General's Office for the United States. I want you to complain, complain, complain. That's your right to redress. Complain, complain, complain. Why do you complain, complain, complain? Because it's absolutely necessary. Sorry, I am um, sitting up here dealing with Mr. Aloe Black in the background and some of the songs are repeating that I'm not asking to repeat. Okay, and then, sorry, I forgot about the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency. You're going to complain to the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency as well about the exact same thing. It could be the exact same information. You can do it one affidavit and you say, see attached. You don't have to fill out every single form completely. See attached, see attached, see attached. Cover the who, what, when, why, hows, and where's, and you're just going to be okay. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to make sure I cover everything because this is for you guys. This is for your benefit for when we're dealing with someone trying to take your property. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm hoping that this information is beneficial to you. Many of you are looking for answers, seeking, wanting help. You want somebody to come and be Captain Save a, a person. Look, yes, 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 I paused, okay? L ladies and gentlemen, it can't be that way. You cannot be that person who thinks that somebody's just going to come to your rescue for something that you should have known about. You're going to have to come to your own rescue. Now look, ladies and gentlemen, how do you come to your own rescue? You follow these complaints. You follow the suggestions in this video, along with the research that you have done, combine the two, and create your own process for you. Follow your disputes. Appeal your disputes. Bring forth your fraud claim. Notice that if you bring forth a fraud claim, you will have to prove the elements of fraud. So go look at the elements of fraud. Hold on. Let's do this. Let's do this. That is Aloe Black. And I don't know who he's singing with on this. Don't know who he's with. But anyway, hold on. Elements of fraud to raise, uh, to give rise to a tort action for deceit, a misrepresentation or falsities. See concealment, failure to disclose, knowledge of the falsities that they knew what they were doing. They had every intent to withhold this information from you, and they induced you to participate and induced others to participate by their actions. That you relied on this information to your injury resulting in damage to you and your property those are the elements of fraud everyone just as I mentioned to you now we have the elements of fraud watch this one now many people confuse conspiracy and fraud they combine nobody asked for California I said elements of conspiracy. I don't want the elements of conspiracy for California. See, conspiracy to defraud. We don't care about conspiracy to defraud, but let's, you know what, let's do that. Let's do conspiracy to defraud. Hold on. No, I don't, I want the conspiracy to defraud. I want the first one. An agreement between two or more people dishonesty deprive you of something that belongs to you and the injury the proprietary of your rights they interfered with that that's what you do that's how you 
get things done, ladies and gentlemen. You cover conspiracy and fraud. Now, you don't have to provide physical proof, but you will have to provide original documents with original seals on them. Sorry, because that's what's construed as evidence in court. That's what's construed as evidence in court. So if you have an original copy of your mortgage that has the original signature with the notary seal, that seal is an official seal of the state of wherever state you are. So that is evidence. And if you have other documentation that is original documents, that's evidence. Anything that you put underneath that first document that has that seal and you attach it to that, then guess, now remember, you can't attach anything to a seal, but you can attach it as evidence. You can't say exhibit A, exhibit B, exhibit C, exhibit D, exhibit F, exhibit G. You can do that. You have every right to do that. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, I got to go. Uh, sorry, this is garbage day, and they'll be here in about an hour, and so I want to make sure I get everything out because, as you can see, it's almost 1030. So let me go and put everything out for them because they're they pretty nice, and I got to speak to one of them. You going to speak to the trash man? You better believe I'm going to speak to the trash man. The trash man deserves to be spoken to. Got to go, everyone. I hope everything continues to go well with all of you. Uh, we're going to take off and do some work on a computer. But while we're doing all of this, we're going to ask that all of you have a very good day, very good life, very good night, very good time, and we'll be back. Gotta go.